Okay, so what we've got going on here is I'm working on squaring up this stock. It's pretty early in the morning, and uh, um, what I've discovered is that I need a fixture plate for all sorts of things that uh, we're going to be doing with this. So one of the things that we need to do with IoT is uh, make some of our own chips. So the idea there is that... Uh, we're going to, um, you know, engrave our circuit boards and kind of make some uh, PCBs. So um, I need a decent fixture plate so that I can clamp things down uh, because this one, you know, this just the XY table is a little bit too small. So we're going to do that. Uh, other things we want to do is uh, we're practicing some some engraving for some of the branding stuff and uh, yeah, so. Uh, the idea here is I'm going to square this up. These two sides are fairly parallel already. And uh, so I'm going to, you know, I, I set this guy up on a square. Uh, this one's pretty small, but essentially you know, I did something like that. It's in pretty good shape. So I'm going to clean this up and uh, then we're going to drill a bunch of holes all the way through here. So uh, in Fusion 360, I kind of built up a little design for the fixture plate, and I'll share that with you guys in a little bit. All right. Okay, so we're in the garage here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a piece of wood that's gonna sit underneath um, this aluminum plate. So this is the fixture plate. We're all squared up as, as good as I can get it. Um, we can do some measurements later, and see how far off I am but uh, I think it's within uh, a couple of thousands uh, actually my last measurement was actually perfect it was exactly the same so um, total perfection there but uh, I'm not sure if that's really true it's probably, <laughs> probably just uh, me uh, subconsciously moving the uh, the calipers okay so what we've got is we're ready to now drill the patterns from the holes on the CNC and in order to do that, we need something to drill into. So what we're going to do is cut a piece of plywood that's going to sit underneath this. And the idea is that when you know when we uh, get to the point where we're going to the drill bit's going to be coming through this, it's not going to go into my my table for my mill. It's actually going to just kind of bury into the wood. So it's pretty obvious stuff. But uh, for those of you who are wondering what's going on, um, that's the way I would explain it. So let's get this cut and uh, get it mounted up on the mill. Okay, what we need to do is make sure this is the same width as that. Or actually as the aluminum. So get this guy up. Good. Okay, so first piece is ripped. Now we're going to cut it to size. Now, if you guys don't have a uh, table saw sled or a cross cut sled, um, you got to build yourself one. This is like one of the most useful uh, things that I think I've built for the table saw or in the shop so far. All right, so you can see how easy it is to use this device. You just kind of line up your stuff. Um, this here is all set up. So all I gotta do is remove my aluminum, hold this in place, cut it, and I've got an exact piece to fit. And there we have it. We've got our little piece. You can see it's, uh, it is perfect. Exactly what we want. This is kind of weird side over here though. It's kind of a weird bump in there. You see that? I was got like a big chunk of something in it. Hmm. Uh, I think when she's all clamped down, it should be good. <clears throat> okay, so I've got this piece mounted up 
um, on the mill and we're going to get ready to run the pattern of drilling the holes. Now, the problem for me is that this piece, this fixture piece is a little bit big for the travel on, uh, on the mill. And I don't have a lot of distance to the back here, which is causing me an issue. So I'm actually going to have to do the holes in two, two operations, uh, which will be a little bit uh, a test of my secondary fit up. Um, what I did was I indicated off the back of this face here to here and same thing on this one so that I could kind of get that as exact as I could. Um, I used to do it off the back of this one but with the wood here um, takes away some accuracy. So uh, going against here and indicate from here to here and same thing when I slide this over. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run the program to drill the four holes which should line up with this perfectly centered with the uh, the slots and uh, if everything goes okay um, you know we'll be able to then mount this thing directly into here and then maybe take the fly cutter and uh, clean off the top and then get it ready for for the operation of the holes and uh, that'll be the most challenging part because I'm gonna have to take the piece out reset it up and make sure it's indicated perfectly uh, in order to get that second uh, second operation to be fully aligned with the holes. So, all right, let's check it out. I think I got a plan here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find this corner here. So use this little uh, edge finder here to determine this edge and this edge using the uh, CNC uh, computer readout over there. And uh, once I have this point identified, I'm going to go ahead and just actually start drilling out the pattern let it go as much as it can to you know the point where this here is going to be getting really close to the wall over here and i'm going to just cancel i think i'm just going to cancel it after that so um, i'll try to actually you know make it so that it does most of these figure out how far it can go and then at least once i have one of these holes identified i can use it to indicate using the the center uh, finder for the hole and then I'll be able to indicate exactly off one of those holes. So I think I think that's not a bad idea and that'll allow me to do a reset up as accurately as, as possible um, without having to worry about any of these edges or dimensions because even though this is it was kind of uh, used on the band so I cut it you know very close I think I've got at least a one millimeter of tolerance kind of all around at the very least to kind of bring it to the final shape but um, I think we're really close already. Maybe I should have kind of brought it straight to the final shape. Um, then I could actually use the edges to indicate a little bit more. But um, I think nothing's going to beat a center point hole on one of the engineered drilled holes. So uh, with the center finder, that should be the best. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and indicate this guy. Well, I don't have much more room. I think I might need to move the block. That would suck. Yeah, you know what? I gotta move this whole setup just a little bit this way. Okay, hold on. I'll be back. Back here, as you can see, we got this thing all set up. Alright, after doing the setup with the indicator, you can kind of see, depending on the focus, that it is lined up perfectly on that point now. And if I check out this side too, a little bit harder to see, but uh, it's right there. 
So we're ready to run the CNC now, uh, but we're gonna go break up the cam a bit and change up the pattern so it kind of just does like this first half and the middle ones. We are at the computer here, and as you can see, uh, this here is the, the model. So what the plan is, is we're going to change the pattern. So this one's fine because these are the holes that are kind of engineered to fit um, inside of the, uh, the T-slots. So those ones are good. I don't mind this pattern. Um, I think it can do that. We got enough clearance for this, I believe. We'll have to measure down to here. Okay, so let's go from here to, oh, that's not working either. No idea what's going on. Maybe we gotta be in this sketch, editing the sketch. Let's try that. Okay, so let's go ahead and measure again. Let's try that. So, okay, 78 millimeters. So I need to make sure I've got, you know, at least that much. So I'll kind of round it up to about 80, but I need to make sure I got enough clearance from there when it's there that it's not hitting the back of the, uh, you know, the uh, Z axis, like of the actual mill itself says you know this piece overhangs the table okay so knowing that what we want to do is kind of change some of the cam procedures now the exciting part about all this this is the first time I've built anything in Fusion 360 and it's the first time I'm running any kind of like significant CS CNC program uh, on uh, aluminum or metal or drilling or anything like that like I've done some some softer material uh, CNC that came out fairly accurate. So that was pretty good, but this is a uh, definitely a new thing for me And it's my uh, first time running this Okay, so um, Why is this invalid toolpath? Well, I'm not sure what happened here Let's go generate toolpath Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. It shouldn't even be in this view. Something's going on with the program. Okay, let me restart it or do something. I'll get it figured out. Okay, I got this thing figured out. I was in a sketch, so I had to get out of the sketch for this to work. So as you can see here, um, we're gonna go ahead and drill these first four, which are the ones that allow us to kind of hold it down inside the uh, you know, inside the uh, T-slots. And uh, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually do this one, which is a different tool. It's gonna give us the countersink for the uh, head. So I'm gonna actually move that one up. And then the one that we're gonna have to split up is this guy, because as you can see, I don't have enough distance to get all the way to these holes. So uh, I'm gonna do all of these first and then uh, then get those ones. Okay, we're back after uh, spending like, uh, you know, an hour and a half trying to figure out how to move the origin. Um, this was actually like in the middle, which was driving me absolutely crazy. So even though my operation had it pinned up here in the corner, um, every time I would import into Linux DNC, it would put it right back in the middle. So the trick on that is on Fusion 360 on the largest setup node. Uh, in the tree, you have to set it there, and then that's kind of going to be the main one. Uh, maybe different software does different things, but uh, Linux CNC didn't seem to respect that that op where I pushed, where I placed it uh, to carry it through. We should just give it a shot. I think it's all programmed, ready to go. Um, I'll be ready up on the uh, controller here, ready to uh, turf it, kill the uh, access if anything goes on. Nothing's going on, the controller's not on. That's why. Okay. So, let's go back over here. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and zero it. And I got some predefined commands in here. So 
So GY0. Oh, it didn't like that. Okay, we're gonna stop that. So it didn't seem to like the new or that Y coordinate there. So we had previously set it, but uh, with me messing around between these two systems, something went fishy. Okay, let me figure that out. Okay, we're back. Hopefully no more screw-ups here. All I did was um, re-home all the axes, um, Z, X, and Y, to this corner. Uh, for some reason, when this coordinate system came in, um, I'm not sure what or why, but essentially something was not, uh, or it was offset for some reason. So, it uh, didn't make much sense to me. Uh, we'll have to try to figure that out. Maybe maybe the footage will show something. Okay, so I think what we can do here is we can give this thing a go now. I feel more confident though. It's a little faster than I would I would like. If, if we get through these ones, I'll I'll reduce it. Fingers crossed. nest on there. So we're close to the end uh, of our limit. Alright, we're done. Very interesting. Okay, we're gonna have to slow that feed rate down. That was a little bit uh, on the crazy side for me. Uh, I'm gonna change that a bit. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the other one where we are gonna come in and plunge the countersink with an end mill on here. So it'll be a, a slightly bigger hole and uh, we're gonna chop that feed rate by, uh, for that operation, that's gonna be, we want that way less, probably like, uh, a tenth of that speed for the end mill. Okay, we're gonna up the freak factor here. Uh, we're gonna be trying to countersink this, these four holes, same pattern, but with the uh, 5 16 uh, end mill. Um, I dropped the feed rate for plunging and feeding to 10 millimeters per minute, so let's hope this, uh, this thing's all good. Tool 5 not found. What the hell is that? Okay, I gotta figure that out. Something's going on with the G code. Okay, well, I thought this one was gonna be uh, scary. Looks like it's going pretty smooth. The uh, slow feed rate, that's the key. So I'm at uh, 10 millimeters per minute.
Well, I don't know about that. That's a pretty big shoulder. I would say bigger than I designed, but uh, we'll just keep rolling with it. Oh, this one's messy. Interesting balls nest of uh, stuff on there. Of aluminum. Aluminium. Okay. Okay, we're done. Look at this big nasty ball of garbage. Oh, it's actually just a bunch of fluff. Okay, well that was what I thought would be probably the sketchier one, but it turned out to be a okay. I'm uh, you know, feeling pretty good about that. We're gonna change the feed rate, obviously on all of these other ones as well all right i'm going to clean this up we'll have a look at it all right so here it is all cleaned up um, as you can see the end mill uh, made a perfect uh perfect uh countersink hole here so i originally had this as a drill but i kind of changed it and it looks like it did pretty good i don't see any kind of melted aluminum on on the edges um, and so that's designed for these guys Pretty, pretty tight fit, super nice. Um, and it's just barely below the surface. So the idea is that, you know, when these guys do go in, there's there's definitely some wood in the bottom of these guys. So that's why uh, these don't fit all the way through. But you can see where the countersink is gonna go. So, so nice. Okay, well, what we're gonna do is reduce the feed rate and we're gonna start blasting out the array of, of holes. And uh, that's gonna be uh, very exciting because that's, uh, that's what it's all about. Okay, and now for the star of the show. Uh, we're gonna try to do an array of holes. They're gonna go uh, pretty much as far as here, and uh, hopefully, I'll have to watch on the last row because I might have to shut it down, do an emergency shut off if I calculated wrong. But um, this is it, so uh, let's go for it. This bad boy's on. that come hit play uh oh don't like that it's gonna hit this it's gonna hit that it's gonna hit that oh just barely that was scary It could almost hit here too. I don't think it will. 
Okay, now we're clear on that one. We should generally be okay now. Okay, the speed race is... I don't know, probably... Not too bad. I would like want better chips coming off that drill bit for sure. Okay, well I'll let this go for a bit and bring you guys some shots at the end. We are finished round one of the set. Um, I had to kind of watch it and put a bunch of uh, lubricant on there because it made a huge difference uh, if it didn't have a little bit. So. Now we're going to focus on getting the next uh, row, the last two rows done. So we're going to turn this around, uh, indicate it off one of these holes here, and it uh, should be very interesting. Let's see how it goes. All right, we're back. So after taking a nice little break, having some dinner, getting recharged, I'm ready to finish this piece off. So as you can see, um, what I've done here is I've... Uh, um, indicated to this hole here and uh, made sure that the distance indicating from here and this side as I swing it back um, up to here were the same so um, I'm as you know square and parallel with this to that as far as I can tell and the hole is indicated and I've also set that as the origin for the remaining rows to do so uh, should be interesting we'll uh, we'll see how it goes once it's uh, once it's rolling I'll, I'll I'll see if I can get a shot but like I have to constantly lubricate this thing otherwise it uh, makes weird noises all right Okay, we're close to the end of the weekend here. Had to take a little break to do some uh, some things, some important things. But uh, now that I'm back, uh, you can see um, we're ready to actually face this off now with the uh, fly cutter. I don't have a facing mill for this little guy. Not so sure how well that would work anyhow. But uh, we're gonna clean this top off and then we're ready to uh, do some tapping. But uh, you can see what I did was I did run and put a a chamfer on the the edges here I, I actually just kind of turned it uh, well I just mounted it to the table and then inside the the mill um, I put in one of these guys and then ran it along the bottom so what that allowed me to do because I don't have you know some sort of a v-bit or a, you know some sort of an end mill at the moment that would you know have a profile that would allow me to kind of put a chamfer in so I would need like some sort of a chamfering bit, which I don't have. 
So anyhow, what we're going to do is we're going to face this off and uh, see how that works. Uh, it's pretty much ready to go. I kind of zeroed it up to the point where um, it's zeroed and then I'm going to drop it down and that'll be the pass. I don't want to do a lot of passes because as you can see, I don't have a ton of room on, on the, you know, for how these are countersunk. So uh, hopefully it's going to be pretty, pretty flat and true already. All right, let's do it. making a nice mess um, fly cutter makes it really throws the chips but um, it's definitely one of the coolest tools uh, based on what it can what it can create not so sure about this finish maybe the feed rate was a little bit uh, needed to be different But coming through the middle, you can definitely see some little marks. I wonder if we should like maybe do like a finishing pass, like super light. Maybe at a higher at a higher speed. Don't have a lot to play with on here, so. Hmm. Okay. Maybe we'll try that. Okay, so this is the final project. Um, I'm not going to mill it any farther down just because it's going to get marred up and used and then if it's nicked and I want to clean it off one more time, I can do that. Um, I'm not designing it to be sacrificial, but it, it may end up being like that. Uh, one of the things that I thought was a bit weird was when I did the uh, fly cutter, I wanted to get like a super nice finish and I don't know if you can see, but it's really nice here. And it's really nice here and so what happened was at least for the travel um, we were going this way and um, I, yeah and then back this way on this side but the middle one you see how it's kind of got you can see the pattern a little bit so I don't know if I'm fussy I might just buff it out but uh, the reality is that uh, uh, maybe you know the feed rate or the size of the cut for the fly cutter was a little different because on this one here we took about half the material about like this this one was a more of a full cut coming back and then this one here was uh, was more of a half cut so I don't know if that made any difference uh, maybe you can kind of let me know in the comments if you kind of know some tips for that um, the other thing that needs to happen too is that I can screw these down a bit but what happens is unless I have like a bit of a spacer underneath it's not uh, you know you're not it's not going to be tight right and the reason is is because I kind of got the wrong size screws in here at the moment so I need slightly slightly shorter ones for this um, so that's that's one thing uh, I got to do. Uh, the other option too is to kind of countersink these, but it's already as far as it would go on the thread. So the real answer is is just get some smaller uh, smaller screws. Actually, you know what? It's going to need a little bit of countersink, not much, but a little bit. So that that's a, a bit that I got to do, and then I've got to uh, you know thread all these holes. 
So that's it. This is the end of this project. Um, you're going to get to see this plate in use because one of the first things we're going to do is, uh, you know, we're going to put uh, this on here and mill this as a PCB. So uh, that's one task we need to do, uh, clamp this down. So we're going to make our own circuit board, which should be fun. So you'll see this in action on that. And then uh, we're also going to be doing some, uh, working on some engraving, see if we can do some engraving and some brass. So it should be some pretty cool projects. All right, I'm out.